Hello everybody, good day to you, welcome back. This is a 2011 Lexus RX 350, I think. I think it's a 350. Uh, customer doesn't state much, they just had it serviced, uh, preventive maintenance, oil change and whatnot. Uh, no complaints really, they just wanted to get a good look over from yours truly, just to see if we're gonna have any upcoming uh, issues or maintenance. Powering on, starting the engine. What do we got here? 89,602 miles on the clock. No check engine lights, none of that stuff. Oil change looks good according to the sticker. Okay, let's get this thing into the shop. We'll lift it up, take a peek underneath. I also heard, oh, well, what did they say? Oh yeah, 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 they said something about a, um, uh, like a rattle noise on occasion. So we'll make sure to take a look at the heat shields and the uh, splash guards and everything down below while, the, while this is up in the air. Let's go ahead and pull this in right about here. I'll scooch up in a second. I need to mop up some coolant from a Jeep. Parking the auto, powering down. Okie dokie, I got parts here for this uh, Lexus. So uh, flip this up with our orange glove subscribe button. People have been uh, getting mad at me for wearing gloves this month. So uh, now I got some gloves on. We're gonna pick this up. It's gonna be a real easy job. Uh, pull the wheels off, couple bolts, both sides, slap in our new units. And uh, we're gonna be good to go here. So let us get through this. Okay, so it is actually the next day. Uh, I didn't get this in until late last night. But since we're gonna do a full on inspection, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat this uh, like a pre-purchase inspection. And we're just gonna operate every feature in the car just to make sure it's all working hunky-dory like. Windows, we'll do the sunroof. I know that's risky business because operating sunroofs can leave you with a stuck open sunroof. But we're gonna do an inspection and that's how it's done. So we're gonna operate all features on the car. Everything works, all the buttons work. Yep, yep, yep. Good. Let's try the tailgate. All the locks seem to work. We're gonna go by, click all the seat belts, make sure that those actuate. I'm sure they do, this is a very good condition, but. All right, let's close that. Begin closing now, please. Hmm. Oh, you gotta hold it, okay, got it. All right, interior functions seem to work. Horn, no, 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 blower speeds. I know the AC works because I can feel it. Seats work because I moved them. All right, I think our interior is good. Let us pop an Z hood and uh, take a look under the bonnet. Powering down. Let's do a quick light check while we're here. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, low beams, low beam marker and high beams yes yes all right lights are all functioning as designed all right next eye hood there we go hey i can't see anything there's some light bar will help hey i can't see anything you know i've heard that i have the ability to make a mountain out of a molehill and it appears that our oil change guys failed you see their caps on upside down you just can't have that not really significant, but it is to some people, and, and I happen to be one of them. So let's just put that on the right way. Washer solvent, empty. Well, don't worry, oil change guys. I'll finish your job for you. Let's see what's in here. Popping the lid. How's our coolant looking? Red color, probably OE. That's okay. Let's check out our battery terminals. Those are tight, fairly cleanish. I'll go ahead and test it while it's here. Where's my tester? There it is. Woo. All right, what do we got here? An interstate battery. We're looking, it's a group 24F. Looks like it is 700 cold cranking amps, according to the sticker. Let's get our machine attached here. Cold cranking amps, we'll test that at 700. 
458 weak battery oh that's not okay Let's just make sure our connections are good and we'll do a retest oh come on get on there what are you doing there we go Four fifty-eight. Okay, that's recommendable. Uh, look at that! It fired right off there like a cannon. Let's take a look at this torque mount real quick. These things like to tear. That one's good. Uh, what else can we see from up here? Fluids. What do we got here? How's our brake fluid? Hmm. Looking okay. It's at the full mark. This is good. Let's pull this big cover off and get some access to our uh, engine air filtration element. You go right there. Hello, air filter. What do we got? Brand new. Right on. This is good. Oh, this thing's mint. This, ta this car is totally mint. Oh, I dropped the clip. There it is. Clip recovered. Not gonna have that. We don't lose parts here. Especially if it makes our car more shinier. See, someone already lost those. Uh, note to self, I need to get a master clip kit so I can replace missing clips in the future. Definitely note to self. All right, let's set the rack on this thing. Take a look at the undercarriage. Uh, like I said, we're primarily looking for a noise. Check the door handles too. There we go, those are good. Uh, like I said, checking everything. There we go. Right on. And we're on this lift, so black subscribe button. Moving on up. Tires look great, almost brand newish. Michelin Primacies, that's a great tire. All right, let's head down below and see if we can't find a rattle noise. Hmm, I can definitely tell that this has been up north before. We've got some uh, some surface rust action. Bunch over here, over here, nothing terrible. But I can definitely see a little bit of oxidation. Okay. Hey, there's a shock absorber leaking you see that that's all from the shock right there that's got a leak that should be replaced this one yeah it's a little bit there's a little bit on that uh, left rear okay Let's see moving forward hmm no paint it's okay though all right not bad not bad Let's look for a noise. What do we got? Heat shield noise, I'm thinking. Exhaust is leaking. That might be it. Just looking for a rattle noise. Hmm. A little bit of oil left on that uh, oil filter cap. Here, I'm gonna need a rattle detector. See what we get. Nope. No rattle here. Nope. Nope. Oh, there is a heat shield up there on that converter. Let's give that thing a tap. Yeah, I don't think that's it. Hmm. Honk if rust falls off. Yeah, I don't hear a rattle, all right. Yeah, there is a heat shield on this uh, rear converter back here. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I reached in there and wiggled it around. I don't think that that's rattling. So I'll check the front one next and uh, maybe the ones on the manifold up front as well. But back here, we're good. These brakes are looking good too. No rust on them. I'm sure they've been changed, at least those fronts have. Let's check out these rears real fast. Those look good. Those have been replaced once. Okay, all right. Yeah, let's uh, let's let her down and check that uh, that front manifold and see if uh, that's our rattle noise. 
They said it wasn't uh, uh, very severe and it didn't happen all the time, but this one to make sure nothing's falling off. Okay. Uh, let's check this front manifold down here. Might have to pull this cover. Yeah. Unclick, please. Come here. Let's check uh, this thing. It says do not touch with a burning hand. I'm gonna touch it. Yeah, that's not rattling either. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty decent under here. There's nothing leaking, valve covers don't leak. We don't have a rat's nest living inside of this uh, cylinder head valley right here. Uh, but I did find those leaky shocks. So I think that's uh, I think that's gonna be our recommendation with a suggestion of a battery. Let me go write this up and uh, we're gonna give them a call and uh, see what we're gonna do with, uh, with what we have found so far. All right, let's roll the rolly cart on over and we'll go ahead and get started right here. We do have a wheel lock and a wheel lock key. On clicks. See what we got here. Yeah, a little crusty rusty. Not too bad. Me thinks we're gonna need some penetrating lubricant in here. Now I don't know if there's a bolt on this side or if this bracket is just threaded. So we'll uh we'll deal with that when we get there. And the bottom one. There we go. And uh, that one's got a nut on it, that's for sure. Alright. I believe we're dealing with fasteners of the 17 millimeter variety. Oh no, I had to say it. This is supposed to be an easy job. I said that, didn't I? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's take the bracket off. It's on the other side. <laughs> yeah, that's a crusted on fastener. Okay. Let's see if it comes off on this side. I'm now a little nervous that uh, that bolt is rusted to the uh, the inside metal piece on the shock absorber mount. Yeah. Well, I don't concede defeat, and we're not giving up. So let's just see where this road leads us. I wonder what's gonna happen with this one. I bet the nut's gonna come off, and the bolt won't come out. That's what I think. Okay, escalation level three. We need uh, the air gun next. Let's fire up the compressor. So while our compressor is compressing, let's try the bottom bolt. All right, well it turned, that's cool. All right, the bottom one came out. This pleases me. See that? Cool little trick. Come out. More hammering. There. Okay, so the shock's out, but the problem is, is the bolt is stuck in there. Uh, I guess I've got to get these apart and see how this works out. So, upon closer inspection, I think this nut is uh, welded somewhere in there to the bracket. So what I'm gonna do is put this back on and I'm gonna bolt this back to the chassis and use an extension and try to manually break that thing loose. If that doesn't work, then uh, maybe I'll start cutting some stuff off. Who knows? I don't know, we'll see. So that's now secure again, so I can try to put some more torque uh, on this bolt here to see if I can't get that to come out. I, I hope it comes out. Hi, Rick. Yeah, I, I really, really don't want to have to get a new bracket or cut this off. Let's see what this does. 
Moving. It moved. Ow, I hit my noggin. Okay, it's kind of moving. Let's see if I can uh, impact it out now. More lubricant. Is it gonna work? Cool, it did something. I bet that's super hot. Okay, did I win? I don't know, still stuck. Yes, victory. Okay, new units ready, it's going in. I've unboxed it. It is a Monroe OE equivalent, nothing fancy. Please go in. We're not gonna fight all day on this. I, I'm not interested in that. Not at all. I'm not gonna hit the, the case of it, that would be bad. I need up. There's some. There's some boring, yeah? Try driver. There. Smarter, not harder. All right, we're back down below again on the bottom side. Let's uh, turn that and get the shock in its little bracket. Give it a little bit of encouragement here. And again, I'll pry driver that to pick up on it some to get the bolt started. Because the bolt comes in from the uh, front side over here. There we go. Just a little bit. Should be all I need. Oh no. All right, bolt coming in. Hope you guys can see. I think I'm blocking all your light. Tap that through lightly. Now, you know, if it's hung up, you don't want to tear up those threads, but a couple taps won't hurt anything. Let's see, what was that, a 17? I forgot. Yeah, that was 17. There's my, my impact. Let's get this guy tight. Click. Woo! And uh, one more up top right here. And we've got one side, good to go. It had me a little nervous, not gonna lie. Fix again. Got it. Okay, one is done. Let's go get the uh, passenger side. Okay, on the passenger side here, I have the, uh, the wheel removed already. And this one looks a little less uh, crustified than the driver's side. So maybe, um, maybe I'll luck out here, let's find out. Yes, that was cool. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, we're here at the bottom bolt again. Let's see if this one comes out with the same amount of ease. Rust. And I spoke too soon. That one's not coming out. Let's try the manual unchecked method. No. Um, longer wrench. You see, I just had to open my big mouth and engage some optimism. Let's try the longer wrench. I cannot fit a uh, impact on that side on the nut because the uh, lower control arm is in the way. Don't pull this off the rack, Ray. That would suck. Yeah, there we go. That was a violent unclick. Woo! Got it. No, it is stuck to the shock. I've got the nut loose, but the bolt is rusted to the uh, metal inside of that shock absorber. Let's try this way. 
Turn. Turn. Oh no. If this doesn't come unstuck, we're in worse shape than we were on the other side. Okay, let's try the ratchet. I'll just uh, stand on it. Yeah, you're gonna turn. I think I got it. I hope. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I'm not uh, jumping for joy just yet. Not yet. Hmm, my gun's not happy. Stop doing that, impact gun. Yeah. Yep, and the screwing around stops now. Bigger guns make smaller problems. America. <laughs> what? Make a liar out of me? Yeah, it's making a liar out of me. Yeah. Come out. Pry bar. You're gonna come out of there. Why? Seems to be getting stuck. What do you think? Yeah, it's getting hung up on the metal insert inside of that bushing. It's gotta keep forcing it around. Uh, and the bushing is now turning. That's not okay. Now what do we do? Just keep working it. More lube. Just keep working it back and forth till you get there. That's all I can do. Escalation uh, level three. So I'm starting to give up on uh, asking it. It's uh, nearly time to force it. Yeah, there's a bunch of rust in here and when it meets this threaded section, I, I think it's just getting hung up. And there's nothing to uh, help it come out. So I'll do that externally. impacting pry bar check it out long chisel on an air gun an air hammer
work. Oh, this is not good. It's not working. I spoke too soon. Shot myself in the foot. Yeah, see how it's turning that inside? Which doesn't make sense because I know it's not. It's stuck to it. Or is it? See that? Bent the bracket. That's okay. We have hammers for that kind of thing. No, it's free. It's, it's got to be free. I don't understand. Unless that inside collar in that bushing really is rusted to the uh, the shaft and I just can't see it. Kind of possible. But not exactly probable. No, it, it turns independently. Why won't it come out? Nonsense. Everything I get is covered in rust. And what? So the bolt is still in its stuck position and I can't push it out that way. I'm wondering if I can just push it in again. I've got some space here and perhaps it will, uh, it'll break free of whatever's got it bound up in its position and then I, I can try to get it out that way. Uh, forgive me for blocking the view. This is actually a ball joint pulling device but I, I think it'll give me a, a good way to press on that, uh, on that bolt. Uh, again, I'm just trying to break it free of whatever it's hung up on inside of the shock mount here. This is a little unorthodox, but it might be a complete failure, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Not really lined up. Did that do anything? Not really. Loud noises again. Aha, did you see that? It moved. Let's try it again. I saw it move. No, you're gonna come out now. You are. Hot down here. I need to uh, point my fan at me. Come out.
If I could get a tool on the other side, I could maybe try to push it through. What are we so stuck on? Maybe if I turn this a bunch, I can squeeze a tool in here to try to press that through. Let's try that. All right, so on the front of this control arm here, there's this little aerodynamic deflector thing. It's just pointy on the front edge, designed for fuel economy. I'm gonna pull this off and uh, get a little bit more space here. Cause I, I need to figure out how to get some kind of press tool or something on that bolt to, uh, to get that extracted from the shock. Yeah, I spoke too soon, didn't I? I need to learn to keep my big mouth shut, but I won't. They've been telling me that my whole life and I still don't do it. I guess that's what makes me kind of me. No filter. Okay, that one's not gonna fit. Okay, one last attempt. I have a uh, tie rod press here. This is the Harbor Freight one. And I'm, again, I'm just trying to push this bolt through the shock. I don't get it because it, it moves a little bit and then it hangs up and then it's done. So I, I don't know why why we can't get it to come out. But I, uh, I suppose at this point the why doesn't really matter. Let's see if this works. It's either gonna work or it's not. Sketchy. Did it work? I don't think it did. No, I don't think it did at all. I think it slipped. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's slipping off now. Change our angle of our dangle here. Nope. Okay. Escalation level whatever I'm on. Five? What am I? Five, six? Let's jump straight to nine. Initiating escalation protocol level nine. Lauren, fire, come here, come here, come here, run. <laughs> Love you. Nah, I'm good. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be the boy who cried wolf. I'll never do that to you again. Thank you. Hmm, I'm out of blades. Need more blade. Okay, new blade. I got a new one. hot whatever hit me stop it Woohoo! there we go yeah that's real easy right look at that pry bar right out yeah super super easy all good now I gotta go uh Get a new bolt, but uh, it's out of here. All right, guys, we're getting somewhere now. Look at what I got here. Check it out. It's not metric threads, but this will work. This will work just fine. It better. I drove all the way across town to the bolt store to get a hold of these. And if this, uh, this does not work, I will be not, not very happy at all. You stay. See if this thing fits, and it does. Okay, we're good to go here. Let's just get this thing up a little bit into its home. Come here. Turn up. Oh, I don't have the flangey strength in my thumb there. That's not gonna work. Fry driver, where are you? Actually, let's try the actual pry bar. See if that's gonna work. Yep. A little bit more. Uh oh, I lost my washer. Hang on guys, I'm, I need to organize my life. One handed here. Because the right hand is holding something up. See, that's a skill formed of, uh, out of necessity. 
Booyah. And the takeaway from this is keep your big mouth shut, Ray. Hmm, there we go. Click. Sweet. All right, one more bolt up top, and then uh, this repair is complete. Well, actually, no, it's not, because I still have to put that little little uh, wind deflector shield thing back on that goes there. It's important. Last bolt going in. Click. It's secure. All right, wind deflector. Let's get this thing in, and it clips on on the bottom. Then up top, it's got a couple bolts that bolts in. There's one back around here, giving it the old reach around treatment. Get in there, please. Yeah, things like this little deflector, they uh, they don't come on the, the lower trim models, but uh, you get into the upper echelons of the build and uh, they give you these little bonus features, like wind deflectors on your control arms. Again, it's all a, uh, a fuel economy effort. If you reduce wind drag, then uh, that's less fuel you need to use to push through the air. That's the theory anyway. I don't know how effective it is, but the engineers seem to think so. So we'll go with that. Not bashing the engineers, not this time. I'll save that for uh, whenever I get a Dodge. <laughs> Manual pickets. All right, that one's good. And it's stuck, rust. Give it some twists, there we go. And I've got the one other one on the inside and that's enough for our nuts and bolts with the exception of, uh, of our wheels. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one good, guys. I'm trying to get out of here. Got some turkey to eat, maybe some ham and some cornbread. So, all that being said, before I start rambling, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Prayer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I didn't enjoy this video. It was rather stressful and suspenseful uh, for me. But I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you did enjoy this, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, uh, then go back and watch something else. And maybe you'll enjoy that one. So, again, and as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Lexus.